Hello and welcome everybody to another episode of Dynamics Unplugged. Today we're going to be talking about a really cool topic, delivery date control. It's been around for quite some time, uh, even in past versions, but a lot of you might be new to it and, and might be wondering what capabilities are offered uh, under delivery date control, being able to calculate lead times for your sales orders, for your transfer orders, and being able to keep your customers and your warehouses updated with the most relevant information and, and give them accurate lead times for order entry. So I'm going to start off with a quick description over what some of the capabilities are, and then we're going to go into a, a pure demo, really. So we're going to start off with uh, what types of delivery date control are out there, and this plays on top of other functionality that's available. So for example, delivery date control of none uh, is when the system doesn't calculate any ship and receipt dates on your transfer orders and your sales orders. They're entered manually. They default to the current date. People can change them. Uh, there is no offset between the ship and, and receipt date when you use that method. Um, that occurs automatically. You are manually populating those fields based on your own uh, tribal knowledge or customer requests. Then we step up a level. We have the system able to help us provide a little bit of information, which is using the option called sales lead time. This is very common in catalog companies, for example, where you're expected to have things on the shelf and you're just quoting an average number of days. You're not doing any calculations that consider on-hand inventory or incoming supply or other demand. You're just quoting a default lead time, very good for static items that uh, don't have a lot of variability or seasonality, known demand. We don't need to consider their stock availability. We trust that within this sales lead time, those orders can be delivered. Uh, it doesn't prevent you from shipping them early. Obviously, you can build your supply chain practices around that, um, but it does calculate the ship date as the current date you're entering the order plus that sales lead time. So for example, today is 412. If, if my product had a 10 day lead time, the calculated ship date when I enter a line for that item would be 422. Then we start to get into the more advanced options. What can we really do to optimize our supply chain so that sales staff isn't going in and doing a lot of uh, calculations? They don't have to call the planning department, the dispatch department, production. They don't have to go and run a bunch of explosions manually or anything like that to come up with a date, but they do want to consider all that other information. That's when we get into things like available to promise. Available to promise is a calculation that tells you what the quantity of an item is available and when it can be promised to a customer on a specific date. So for example, uh, a customer places an order for an item ABC today. We might have on-hand inventory. We might have other sales orders or transfer orders that require to consume that on-hand inventory. We might have incoming supply via production orders we're making, transfer orders we're shipping, or purchase orders to procure that item. And we want to calculate when is the real, realistic ship date of that item pending any you know, allocation of, of inventory we already have. That's what Available to Promise will do. It will say, do we have available inventory right now? If not, when will it be available over our planning time frame to give an estimated ship or receipt date? Um, the big thing you'll see with an Available to Promise when we get into the demo is that a uh, if the expected um, available to promise quantity, the expected available quantity exceeds your time fence, then it's just going to quote that. So if you never wanted to quote longer than 90 days, for example, you could set your ATP time fence to 90 days. And if it can't calculate that you can fulfill that demand over the 90 days, it will just give you a 90 day lead time on that order. And then it's up to the salesperson uh, or order enterer to really adjust it and update that date if necessary. ATP plus issue margin goes one step further. This uh, accounts for safety margins. For those of you who have seen some of the maybe previous sessions we've had, there are safety margins to account for uh, processing time, for example, in the warehouse uh, that isn't accounted for in a lead time. So we might have a one or two day issue margin to offset of that lead time, one or two days to account for things like preparing shipments um, after the inventory is already made available for packaging, labeling, um, getting it through the warehouse. That issue margin is required to prepare the items. Um, you you can have that on the master plan or the coverage group. You shouldn't have it in both places. Otherwise, they add together to give you an even larger buffer. Um, but the calculation in general, ATP, ATP 
plus issue margin is the same. One just considers the issue margin while the other one does not. And then finally, we have our, I don't want to say most complicated, but maybe um, most uh, effective use for make to order scenarios, which is capable of promise. This is when we really want to run a full explosion, a bill of material explosion through a finished good at the time of order entry to come up with the realistic make to order ship date because we're not stocking that. Uh, that finished good, maybe it's an engineered item, maybe it's a configure to order item. So we use something like capable to promise to calculate when the earliest available ship date may be. So these are the options to estimate and, and input um, dates on your ship and your transfer orders, uh, sorry, sales orders and transfer orders as ship and receipt dates. Um, you can use them to align those dates, you can use them to simulate those dates and then still override them. Uh, and now that you have kind of that background, let's go ahead and go into D365 and start to look at a couple examples. Um, so I'm going to navigate here first to my um, my accounts receivable settings. My accounts receivable parameters are what control, what is the default delivery date control method that we use for sales orders and transfer orders. So I'm going to navigate down to this shipments section and delivery control, and you can see there is a default here. This is a default for this legal entity. When we enter sales orders, what should the delivery date control method be? Should it be none? Should it be sales lead time, ATP, issue margin, and CTP? Um, you can see we can also quote a default sales lead time there. So if we are a catalog company and, and our whole catalog is fairly um, similar in nature and we just quote a default lead time for everything, not that that's common, but if you do have a simple uh, legal entity, simple warehouse distribution center that offers that, you can enter that here and that would apply to all items. Choose if that uh, cons is considering working days or calendar days. And then the ATP time fence. The ATP time fence, as I mentioned, is the amount of time that the system will do an ATP calculation for if your on-hand inventory that's available to ship against your demand exceeds the 30 days. In this case, it would just quote your sales lead time is 30 days from the current date. Uh, and that is <clears throat> at time of order entry. ATP does not recalculate uh, as the calendar turns. So if I entered an order today and it gave me an ATP date of 5-1 uh, and tomorrow comes and my supply chain has shifted, that sales date isn't automatically going to shift based on the latest ATP. That's when you'll use things like master planning with your action messages and your calculated delays to see if you should alter any dates on transactions. Um, I have had customers and partners alike ask me that before, thinking that ATP dynamically updates all the time and it is automatically updating orders. It is not. It is an order entry tool for delivery date control. And then you use the other functionalities and master planning to update and maintain those dates. So here is the default parameter at the legal entity level. What you will notice as I navigate to an item is that we have the ability to override that or to specify that more granularly at an item and item warehouse level. So we will choose Drew's Gray IPA as the beer of choice today, and we'll go ahead and, and we'll look at our default order settings, which we have looked at before in, in previous examples or demos. Uh, and we're gonna scroll down um, both you'll see in the inventory section for the purpose of transfer orders and then down here in the sales order section for the purpose of sales orders, we have those same set of parameters. So if I clicked the override delivery control like I did here on this item, that means I'm ignoring the parameters in the AR parameter section and specifying what my delivery date control settings are for this specific item at the site or warehouse that I have uh, set up here so you can see for site two warehouse 24, I have ATP turned on for Juice Gray IPA. My time fence actually looks out 180 days uh, compared to the 30 day time fence we saw in the legal entity parameters. Uh, and I'm not including planned orders as part of that. I could also override the sales lead time. So if we did have a small set of items that are really uh, static and known and we wanna just use a quoted sales lead time, you can do that here as well. So you have the AR parameters. We have the item specific parameters. You guys have seen what options uh, are available. Well, now let's go ahead and, and actually apply this to a sales order. Um, so I'm gonna go to the cell tab. I'm gonna go to open sales order lines to see what existing SOs I have out there. And we'll actually use one of those to kind of manipulate uh, and see the dates on our orders. So we'll take order uh, 1116 here. We can see we have a sales order for 440 liters. 
And if we go to the delivery tab, we can see that this is currently controlled with uh, with ATP and, and a requested ship date in February of, of next year, actually, and a confirmed ship date of August of this year. Now, if this was a new sales order, uh, there's really kind of one or two things I could do to to simulate that date or to get that date. So one is I enter all lines and then I want to kind of do a delivery date control on everything on the order because we're doing a ship complete or I can run it individually from the line down here in the delivery tab. Um, so if I was doing it uh, uh, on the header, I suppose, I could come in and, and start to mess around with my sales order. Um, I could come in and, and start to generate really an ATP from the, so the header, has a requested ship date up here, as you can see, and, and simulate delivery dates button. So if I clicked it from the header, it would simulate delivery dates for every line versus clicking that button down here, which is just this line itself, um, which I'll go ahead and do now. This button is available no matter what delivery date control method you use. So even if you're using none, this button is available to give you an idea of what the ATP calculation would do. So for example, I click my um, simulation button there. It knows that my delivery date control method, as, as you saw from uh, both our AR parameters and the item itself is ATP. And it's calculating right now that my earliest ship date could be August 1st. And you see all these warning icons. They're saying essentially I should not have enough inventory to ship any sooner than that. Uh, now, if there's something the system doesn't know, like the current on-hand inventory that's allocated elsewhere is going to become available because we're going to get a customer cancellation, then I can override and I can say, you know, update the confirmed ship date. If I select a date here, um, you know, that's not available, you can see there's a warning. So if, let's say, the simulation looks great, but I really want to override it, um, you can't do that in the simulate delivery dates button. That's just showing you what's available. When you do choose delivery date control, like for example, I'll switch this to sales lead time away from the ATP we have and click save. Um, that date is already confirmed way ahead of, of my uh, requested date. So let's, so we can say, go ahead and click today. I'm gonna click save. And it's gonna say the entered ship date 412 is not valid because it's in uh, the sales lead time period of five days. So it's actually suggesting to go out uh, to 418 which is six days, but we have the weekend there. So that's why it's uh, the earliest date I can ship. So I can say update requested ship date. If I did want to ship it today and I actually could go within the sales lead time, I can override and disable that and just allow myself to enter whatever date I put in. Um, so you do have the ability to override. Now what happens though, let's say we, we started with sales lead time or we started with nothing. Now we want to go to ATP. I'll switch that. I'll click save. Um, we still have that confirmed ship date of, of 8-1 there because it already was on ATP and it thought that date, but all we really saw is that it told us we could have that date, right? If I click simulate delivery dates, it's not going to tell me a whole lot of information other than, hey, it's 111 days away is the earliest you can do it. And maybe I want to know why. Um, so one of the most overlooked things is you can actually access this information straight from the sales order line as well. I'm going to minimize some of my screen just to make that a little bit more easier to see. What you would do is you'd click this product and supply button and you will have the ATP uh, information available to you from there as well. This is going to show a little bit more of a graph and it starts with here's the quantity on your order line which you can edit because maybe they want you to si do simulations. You know, When can it ship if I order 10 units? When can it ship if I order 20 units, 50 units and so on? And what about this warehouse versus that warehouse? it's going to tell you the date. ATP, this is the quantity I can promise on that date. On hand is my current on hand. And then this is if there is a receipt, incoming inventory, or an issue, outgoing inventory, or consumption, sales, things like that, on that date. And it's always going to update the ATP quantity based on receipts, issues, and on hand. So you can see I can ship up to 410 units, but not quite the 440 on my order. And then it's really until May that we start to see some movement. Um, so we have 117 receipts, 250 being issued, 410 on hand is the balance there. And it's really not until we get into August uh, that we hit a time frame where we're going to have enough inventory 
um, to both supply existing orders that are already out there for Drew's Gray IPA um, and this new order of the 440 pieces. You might think, hey, we have 543 pieces on hand. There's 440 on this order. Why can't I deliver it? Um, we don't see the receipts and the issues right on today's date, but that could be outstanding orders that haven't been fulfilled, back orders uh, on previous days that are consuming or already allocated to that on hand. Um, so here we really just need to look at the ATP column to determine when is the quantity that we want going to be available. That might lead us to say, hey, customer, you know, 440 is not available till 8-1, but 410 uh, are available now. Do you want to reduce your order size or take a partial and take the rest later on? So that ATP is really, really powerful in helping us determine what are our possible dates to hit, uh, allow us to adjust those dates. It's going to consider other things as well, which I haven't touched upon. I really just touched upon delivery date control, but it's going to factor in your calendars. Those could be your warehouse calendars. Those could be your customer calendars if they only accept shipments or deliveries on certain dates um, for vendor purposes when it comes to planning out and running explosions on purchase items. We're going to consider their calendars. Uh, any transport that you have set up in a transport calendar um, would be taken into consideration as well. So, for example, on uh, deliveries, if you've mapped your modes of delivery to uh, to transit times or between warehouse transit times, like, for example, I'll click on um, – sorry, not my delivery terms, but my delivery mode back here on my order, you can see that I could actually set up a transport calendar for when things are uh, delivered by truck uh, and come up with how, uh, what are the transit times between warehouses or between my warehouse and customers based on that, uh, that mode of delivery. So we have a working time calendar here um, that is associated with that transport calendar of, of 24 hours. Uh, and if I were to go into inventory management, set up uh, distribution and transport days, I could see if mode of delivery 10, my truck mode of delivery, is tied to any uh, default transit times, as, as I mentioned. Um, so here we can see all our different warehouses. I'm going to go ahead and say warehouse uh, 24. And it looks like for mode of delivery 10, if we're shipping to New Hampshire, we do have seven days set up. Um, so this would be if customer addresses are in New Hampshire, you could have that by state, you could have that by country, you can have warehouse to warehouse. So transport days, calendars, along with your delivery day control methods are all going to be taken into consideration when coming up with those dates uh, and deciding really uh, what your ship dates and receipt dates should be. So now with that overview, hopefully that gives you an idea of what is available to calculate your delivery dates on transport orders and sales orders to save time for your order enterers, your sales personnel, your warehouse personnel, and give you the most up-to-date and accurate information available. Till next time, this is Andrew Lensack on D365 Unplugged. Thank you, everybody.